Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain to you BIM reinforcement detailing. I'm going to show you how to read the reinforcement in a BIM. Now, let's say for example, this is the first time you are hearing of BIM reinforcement detailing. Do not worry, I'm going to explain everything in depth. If you take a look at the screen, we have a 3D view of a BIM and we also have the cross section of a BIM. Now, I want you to know that when we reinforce the beam, we provide a steel inside the beam. And the steel we provide inside this beam are divided into three parts, that is into three sections. So the first one is the bottom steel. We have the bottom steel. The second one is the top steel. Why the third one? we have what we know as the transverse steel or we can also call this stirrups. So basically the bottom steel is the main steel. The top steel is what we know as the anger bar or anger steel. Then the stirrup is what we also know as the transverse bar. Now take a look at this uh, 3D picture here. If you take a look at this, the we have a red uh, steel bar here. So this is the bottom steel. Then if you take a look at the top part, this is the top steel. Then if you take a look at the transverse part here, we also have a, a transverse um, steel bar that is connecting the top bar to the bottom bar. So these are what we know as the stirrups. And now you know this, you may want to ask, why do we provide this bottom steel bar? Why do we provide the top steel bar? And why do we provide this transverse and uh, steel bar? So let me explain this clearly. Now, we all know that concrete is very, very strong in compression, but concrete is very, very weak in tension. So concrete is strong in compression, but they are weak in tension. And we know that steel is very, very strong in tension. Now, when we apply load on a beam, when we apply load on a beam, the way the beam deflects is going to be in two parts. So let me explain this to you using this uh, cross, uh, cross section of this beam. So we know that the neutral axis of a beam is located somewhere here. So we always have the neutral axis in a beam because this is what makes the beam to be static so that the beam do does not run away from us. So above the neutral axis, we have the compression. So this is the compression zone. This is above the neutral axis. While below the neutral axis, we have the tension. We have the tension zone. Now, when we apply a load on this beam, so let me draw this. So let's say we have a beam here. So this is a simply supported beam. So when we apply a load on this uh, beam, this beam is going to try to deflect like this. So this beam is going to try to deflect, deflect like this. Now, this bottom part is going to be experiencing tension. This part is experiencing, experiencing tension. Why this part, this part over here is going to be experiencing compression. This part is going to be experiencing compression. And because we know that concrete is very, very weak in tension, if we do not provide some if we do not provide something that is going to that is going to resist these tension forces this beam is going to quickly and easily fail so because we as engineers we don't want our beam to quickly fail in tension we tend to provide something which is going to arrest that tension forces and because we know that steel is very very strong in tension we tend to provide steel bar in the bottom side of the beam so we tend to provide steel bar in the bottom side of the beam and this is going to arrest the tension forces so this is why we have steel bar here because the bottom side is experiencing tension and because concrete is weak in tension we tend to provide steel bar which is very very strong in tension so that they can arrest the tension forces i hope you, you understood that now for the top steel for the top steel this is also known as the anger bar now we know that the concrete 
on the top side can easily resist the compression and, and compression forces because concrete is very very strong in compression but we still provide top bars on the top side of the beam now why do we provide this of course we need to tie this bottom uh, steel bar so because we need to tie this uh, bottom steel bar we also provide uh, we also provide a compression uh, steel bar on the top side because if we do not have compression uh, steel bar then we, we cannot uh, connect this uh, top bar so how do we arrange the top bar we also need but uh, we also need uh, top steel bar so that we can connect the bottom to the top so this is why we provide the uh, top uh, steel bar now the last one is the stirrup now why do we provide stirrup now you know the meaning of stirrup so this the stirrup is basically the transverse bar which you can see over here so why do we provide a uh, stirrup we also know that uh, when we apply load on a beam the beam is going to bend that is the beam is is, uh, is, is going to experience a bending moment also the beam is also going to experience what we know as shear forces the beam is also going to experience shear forces and the shear forces is basically acting at the transverse uh, zone of the beam so let me explain this clearly so that you can understand this better so let me draw a beam so this this is beam so we have a simply supported beam with a pin support and a roller support so when we apply load on this beam it is going to deflect it is, it is going to try to deflect like this so this is the bending uh, moment also it is going to have a uh, shear uh, uh, forces so because of this uh, the beam is, is going to try to crack in this uh, direction it's going to try to crack diagonally so because we know that if our beam fail in shear this beam is going to fail very very quick it is going to fail quickly and we as engineers we, we are trying to prevent that so how can we arrest this diagonal and uh, shear forces that uh, the beam is experiencing how can we arrest this we need to also provide a transverse or a diagonal steel bar so this is where the steel ups come into play so this is why we provide the steel up in in the beam so the steel up is going to counteract or is going to arrest the shear forces the beam is experiencing so i hope you understand that okay so now you understand um, now you understand this let me try to also explain something to you using the uh, bending moment diagram and shear uh, force and uh, diagram okay so let's say we have a beam here a simply supported beam and now this only work for simply supported uh, beam because for simply supported beam we have the maximum bending moment at the middle and we have the maximum shear forces at the uh, support so if we apply a load on this beam basically the shear force and the bending, that bending moment diagram is going to look something like this so this is the shear force the shear force is going to look something like this why the bending moment diagram is going to look something like something like this so let me, it's going to look something like this so this is the shear force why this is the bending moment and diagram so we know that for the shear uh, forces we have maximum we have a maximum and shear force at the support as you can see we have maximum shear force at the support look at it at the support we have maximum shear force why at the mid uh, uh, portion of the beam the shear force is basically zero we don't have any uh, any shear force here then for the bending uh, moment for the bending moment at the support the the bending moment is basically zero we don't have any bending moment here at the support but at the mid portion of the beam we have the maximum bending moment now how can we use this uh, knowledge to how can we use this knowledge as in to detail our beam now because we know at the support of the beam we have maximum shear forces so what do we do about this because we have maximum shear forces at the support of the beam we tend to provide this steel up we tend to provide more steel up close to the support of the beam because we are having maximum shear forces then at the middle of the beam we provide less steel up because we are having uh, zero shear forces so we don't need to provide uh, too much uh, 
uh, stirrup because we said why do we provide stirrup we provide stirrup to counteract the shear forces but because we're having zero shear uh, uh, for, uh, force here so we provide less stirrup here and we provide more stirrup at the support of the beam now for the bending moment because we are having maximum bending moment at the mid span so we tend to provide more steel bar we tend to provide more steel bar at the mid span and we provide uh, less steel bar at the support so basically this is for so basically this is for the bottom and uh, and steel bar while for the shear forces this is for the stirrup so i hope you understood the concept so now if you take a look at this cross section we have the uh, the value the data for the steel bar so as you can see the top steel bar we are having two top steel bar and this is having a diameter of four millimeters as you can see top steel bar we are having two and the diameter of four millimeter then for the bottom steel bar we have three bottom steel bar with a uh, uh, six uh, millimeter in in diameter then for the stirrup we are having four millimeter diameter stirrup and this is this is provided at 12 inch center to center spacing so we also need to take a look at the spacing of this stirrup so this stirrup this stirrup over here is placed 12 inches that is the spacing of this stirrup that is the spacing from one stirrup to another stirrup is 12 inches so how can you get this value how can you get the the, the area of the steel bar the diameter of the steel bar and how many steel bar you need to place on the bottom on the top and how many stirrup we also need to place and the spacing we need to um, take when placing the stirrup all this you can get this value by designing the beam so we can design the beam manually or we can also design the beam uh, using a uh, software so you can use software like ETAPS, software like SAP 2000, Start Pro, Protas uh, Structure, RAM, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be explaining to you or uh, how you can uh, design this uh, beam, how you can design a beam manually and also how you can design a beam using a uh, software's uh, program. So these are going to be in my future videos. So if you want to uh, see uh, these videos, Please do not hesitate to subscribe to the uh, channel, click the like uh, button, share these videos to your friends and also hit the bell notification um, icon below. So I hope you now understand beam reinforcement and uh, detailing and how we can also read the reinforcement in a beam. So bye bye, see you in my next video.